Hi folks, Christopher Marlowe, playwright, drunkard, brawler, spy, heretic. What do we want to make of his tragical history of Dr. Faustus? One of the, well, I would call it the finest of his uh, handful of plays, which he managed before he was uh, killed, murdered, either in a drunken brawl or as a result of his uh, political behavior. Let us give it some thought. First of all, structural. Marlowe's play is without a doubt a tragedy. We open with a chorus who offers uh, Faustus's high position and how he falls sums up everything man of great promise who's tempted comes to a tragic end and then the chorus repeats the fall at the end and in between we have the uh, standard actions of a tragedy he is a scholar and we see him at his works and he is introduced as one of the finest of scholars Standard tragic flaw, pride, hubris. Yes, man too proud to accept his role, he has great ambitions, wealth, power, and infinite knowledge. Knowledge beyond that available to any human being, any mortal man. So he takes on the gods, or specifically takes on the one monotheistic deity in the name of his ambition. How? He calls up a demon and offers to sell his soul. Well, the demon shows up, takes him up on the offer, and then after a series of adventures, we come to the end, Faustus suffers his tragic realization and falls into hell. Standard tragedy. There are comic elements throughout, but, well, comic elements are found throughout all Elizabethan dramas, or all of them that I know of, because the clown scenes entertain the audience and, with that open stage, allow breaks between the dramatic scenes. You don't have a closed curtain, so you distract the audience, send them elsewhere as you set the next scene. So those are some of the clown scenes, and uh, for those directly involving Faustus, well, just about every one of them has its basis in the Ur False book, the uh, book, the account of uh, Faustus on which uh, Marlowe based the play. And we have a very strong culmination, a very strong conclusion that Helen of, Stro of Troy scene. Great poetry. High end, direct statement of the fall, full-scale dramatic realization of the condition. Everything is here. However, the other things Faustus appears to be almost plain a fool. Well, it can almost be interpreted as a, fa a farce. Every one of his scholarly references in that opening act is either misquoted or misattributed. And his biblical quote leaves off the second half of the quote, the means to redemption, and that's absolutely essential. Uh, we would say it's absolutely essential. We get on, and uh, he, he talks with Mephistopheles about heaven and hell, and Mephistopheles with hell is within, hell is the absence of, of God, appears very sophisticated, while, Faust is, while Faustus is just stating commonplace, geographical one, as he, he's denying the existence of some place called hell, or wants to know how Mephistopheles can be both in it and out of it. It's the way it goes. Um, yeah. Faustus denying it. How can you deny the existence of hell while you're conducting a conversation with a demon from hell? 
let you know when I figure that one out. And then the action. Every action of Faustus in the middle of the play appears crude, banal, doesn't match his initial ambitions. Again, this is out of the Ur False book. Uh, Marlowe is following the uh, scheme of that, but were it not for the dynamism of that closing act, we could call this play a mock tragedy, a farce. It's not a farce. At least I will tell you it's not a farce. Instead, I will say it's a very, very heretical piece. Probably enough reason in there for uh, Marlowe's enemies to have stabbed him in that uh, Elizabethan atmosphere. Perhaps it is the reason. We really don't know. By leaving off the second half of that biblical quote, Faustus repeats what a Catholic, if he were a Catholic, or an unbeliever, Marlowe may have been one of those two and definitely did not accept Calvinism, but they might see that as the fallacy of Calvinism, fallacy of this belief in predestination. Oh, you're bound for hell and you know it, so you just might as well make the trip. Faustus appears to have decided this when he decides to call up a demon. Now, the source of the play is Lutheran, which accounts for some of these variations throughout. Lutherans are not Calvinists, but uh, I would say it is more Marlowe. And again, Mephistopheles' claim that hell is where heaven is not is modern theologically sophisticated. It's at odds with the typical belief of a geographically defined hell. And Marlowe validates Mephistopheles' claim. He pretty much sends Faustus immediately to hell in Mephistopheles' terms because Mephistopheles shows Faustus the wonders of the universe. Can Faust enjoy them? No. Not a bit. They leave him cold because something is lost from his heart and soul. And Faustus's high ambitions, all of them, just deteriorate, shrink into these clownish tricks, like turning a bale of hay into a horse and stunts like that. Very banal sort of evil. Very crude. Now, Helen of Troy scene, however, again serious, high drama. Is it a final dissolute act by the damned Faustus that he knows it's over and this is a mere embracing of the sensual? Yes, I'll take a kiss. I'll take that. You got that. That's all that is left for me. Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Give me that. There's nothing else. Or, and this is the very heretical Marlowe here, may be a rejection of Christianity, specifically Calvinism, but Christianity in general, in favor of a classical Greek view of purpose and life. Helen comes from the world of Greek myth, from the, the Troy story. She was the most beautiful woman of the world. So, what of this Greek world, this classical world, the Greek mythos, the Greek understanding of the universe, it was not filled with this notion of hell and one being destined to perdition and demons and such as that. Instead, something that, well, I suspect Marlowe would see as transcending, deeply transcending the narrow Calvinism of Elizabethan England, perhaps transcending Christianity entirely. So, play, tragedy, yes, follows the rules and Faustus goes to hell and all of that, so I say yes, despite all those comic elements but also a, an exercise in heresy, or can Marlowe get away with things that 
avails in here that are very, very direct criticism of Calvinist versions of uh, Christianity? I would also say yes. Calvin, Faustus is off to hell, but he goes there after rejecting that cup of healing grace, which would be Lutheran or Roman Catholic, the one offered by the old man, uh, as it's really, really not in keeping with Calvinist uh, theology. But did he reject that grace thinking it was impossible because he has been misled, told he's off to hell, beginning to end by that Calvinist notion of predestination. Marlowe just might be saying that. Might be. I'll tell you what, I'm not enough of an Elizabethan scholar to tell you for sure, and I'm not sure the folks who are thorough historical or thorough uh, Elizabethan scholars know for sure. But that's our complex, problematic, tragical history of Dr. Faustus.